Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. In 2011, an American fireman, Mark Taylor, had a prophetic vision that Donald Trump would be elected president. That became a movie, The Trump Prophecy Hit Theaters. Today we interview Rick Eldridge, the movie producer. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Let's go right to our Skype interview with our returning guest, Rick Eldridge, who has been a guest on our program in the past, a longtime friend of the show, and he makes Christian movies into blockbusters. His most recent success is something called The Trump Prophecy, which was lights out, sold out in theaters nationwide on two nights on Fathom Events, and is now a DVD movie hitting Walmart stores the first week of March. Welcome to the program, Rick Eldridge. Thank you, good to be here. So Rick, I'm so proud of your recent success. Describe the movie, The Trump Prophecy, and what just happened in theaters. Well, it was a book called The Trump Prophecies that uh, by Mark Taylor, a, a fireman, you know, common uh, public servant, who uh, in April 2011 had this premonition that he was hearing the voice of God uh, telling him that Trump was gonna be the next president. He was watching TV up late one night and uh, on the screen is this guy uh, talking to some international business folks and uh, he just gets this uh, you know, thought in his mind and he, he begins to write and it almost becomes like dictation as he writes out this entire prophecy uh, that he then calls the, the, the commander in chief prophecy uh, which became the book, The Trump Prophecies. And uh, we saw the story, I got to meet him. I didn't know what to expect. You know, when you think about some of some of these guys, uh, you know, I didn't know if I was gonna find a guy in a, you know, a, you know, a, a, a white uh, sheet with a, you know, long beard and, uh, you know, or, you know, you know what you're gonna come up with. <laughs> Mark was the, the, the most common, humble guy that you would ever wanna meet. Uh, and God has just uh, used him in a great way with this story. And uh, the message was really for him a point of healing at the end of his career as a fireman, a public servant, uh, where he was dealing with a lot of issues, a lot of his own personal demons, I guess, uh, going in and out of fires and uh, running into harm's way to help people. And um, you know, this, uh, this was a, a point of healing for him to hear a message from God uh, that from you know, someone such as him could, that God would really care about. And so when really you read the book, healing in I, his own life and, and in his own faith, I assume so, the book uh, it's, kind it's of told that as well. That story in many chapters, but who came up with the idea to turn it into a screenplay, and why did you make it into a movie? Well, I met with uh, with uh, Mark and with uh, Mary Colbert, who is a doctor's wife, who was very active in the story too, uh, that created a prayer movement. Uh, but it it really dawned on me that we were coming into the midterm elections. Uh, and, uh, you know, this was a year before that. And, uh, you know, this whole movement of prayer that happened really because of this prophecy, uh, through, uh, a Dr. Colbert's wife, Mary Colbert, who, uh, as part of the story really felt that we need to pray for those in leadership and authority over us. It's a biblical mandate. And, uh, so this movement of prayer, uh, became an every morning, 9 AM, 45 days before the 2016 election. And uh, over 100,000 people uh, were just jamming into phone lines to uh, to pray for our leadership of our country and uh, to pray for change in our country. And uh, I saw this as an opportunity to share a story uh, that was a story of healing, that was a story of unity, that was a story of purpose, uh, and then turn it to a story of prayer and uh, and, and encourage others to pray as we got into the midterms, that God would continue to to direct our country, that would heal our land. As, so Rick, as, we, uh, have a, we have a one tests. minute trailer here. Uh, can you set up this trailer for us? What is the audience about to see? Well, this is kind of the uh, the synopsis, if you will, as the trailer does. You'll see some of the, uh, the dynamics of the story and the fire sequences. And uh, you'll also see the, uh, the point that turns to prayer, but it's uh, 
a trailer that played just before the movie in theaters and uh, it helped promote what we did uh, when we did hit the theaters with Phantom. Let's roll that clip. My job as a fireman was to react calmly. You can't afford to have feelings about him. I'll get you killed. In my work, I've seen everything. But what I saw last night scared me so much. Until recently, nobody knew what PTSD was. Lord, I need you to heal him. I'm done. How does it feel? It's a little scary. I have very graphic dreams. Sometimes I think it's God talking to me. Dreams are important. They can give us a window to what's going on inside. I got this one in 2011. The Commander-in-Chief Prophecy? God is telling us to pray for our country, its leadership, and those in authority over us. That's what we need to do. They're going at him tooth and claw. What if I'm wrong? If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, then will I hear from heaven and heal their land. Welcome back. Hey, uh, Rick, I'm really impressed with not just the, the storyline, but the, the Hollywood uh, value and the, and the production value, really high quality acting and, and lighting and everything. You, you seem to know what you're doing there. Well, I've done it a few times before. And uh, this one particularly, uh, I knew that we were gonna get uh, you know scrutinized in many ways because of the content and they're gonna look for opportunities to shoot at us, they, they always do. And so uh, what I didn't wanna make is a chintzy Christian movie. Uh, so we did a movie that has some phenomenal effects. Uh, it's top quality and uh, we used a lot of the students and a lot of the faculty and the equipment at Liberty Universities and uh, you know, there are some of those big fire scenes in the opening sequences that have 16 red digital 4K cameras catching every angle, and it's pretty phenomenal. I mean, it is, it's a top quality production and we're really proud of it. And uh, I felt like we had to be in order to win the right to be heard to tell our story. Let's take a short break. When we come back, I'll ask Rick about the success in Fathom Events and it's now online available for download. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign an important online petition. Today I wanna to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. I even demanded my own misdemeanor court-martial, and finally Congress agreed with me and reversed the bad Navy policy. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Let's take action today for religious freedom. Would you sign that petition with me? Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Please visit PrayInJesusName.org and sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. Do you ever pray and sometimes you feel like your prayers are hitting the ceiling and they don't get to God or maybe you don't get the result that you hoped for? I'm Dr. Chaps and I wanna make available to you a new resource, a four part video Bible teaching series on how to pray effective prayers. Did you know God has given us instructions in the Bible? For example, in 1 Timothy 2, there are four different Greek words for four different kinds of prayers, supplication, petition, intercession, and thanksgiving. If you don't understand the way God teaches us to pray, then we cannot expect the result for which we hope. I'm asking you to get this important Bible video teaching series on DVD for a suggested donation of only $30. Call us right now at 866-Obey-God. 
Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D, or visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, and get this important video resource for your family. Defending your religious freedom, here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined again by Rick Eldridge, who is a Hollywood movie producer, but he is in North Carolina, his home. Rick, tell me about this movie when it came out in Fathom Events. Did you make money? Did you lose money? Sometimes you take a risk if you're gonna make a Christian yeah. film. It's always a risk to make a movie. Uh, we were uh, very, very fortunate. Uh, Fathom did some good promotions for us. Uh, we had a great marketing team behind it to let the world know about it. And we sold out theaters all across America. And uh, we're very pleased with that. Uh, we decided after two screenings, uh, because of the timing of the movie, uh, to, to go immediately to digital. And we contacted ChristianCinema.com. Uh, and uh, from the day we went on Christian Cinema, we became their number one sales in downloads as well as, uh, as in rentals. So uh, it's continued to do very, very well. We're really pleased. ChristianCinema.com is where people can watch it today. Uh, tell me about your interactions with Amazon and Walmart. Well, we uh, we initially went with Amazon and Christian Cinema, and we were we wanted to cover the the general market, secular market, as well as the Christian market, and uh, we did very well with both. Uh, we then got some interest through our our distributors, which is Cinedime out of California, uh, with Walmart, and uh, Walmart wanted to do an exclusive, uh, which meant that we needed to take Amazon down, so we immediately did. Uh, and Walmart is going to March, the the, the first week of March, uh, first Tuesday in March, I believe it's the 5th, uh, will be releasing in their stores across America as an end cap. Uh, the beauty of that is the end cap is the when you walk by the aisle, that's what you see. And uh, it's not in the in the the sea of thousands of DVDs or Blu-rays. It's an end cap. So it's re- it's a it's a very special positioning. And uh, they promised to give us that if we would do an exclusive with them. So we're very excited about that and about the momentum that will continue through that. Uh, it's probably gonna and, be uh, right up front great. next to the batteries and the bananas. That's what I see when I try to check out. <laughs> there you go. You'll see the Trump prophecy movie right in the front of Walmart in the first week of March. Uh, this is lights out, but are you hearing feedback from viewers? Are they uh, inspired? Do they like Trump more or less? Or how does it impact their political view? You know, it's really interesting, and, and I knew when we made a movie like this that had the T word in it, uh, we were gonna get some responses, and uh, it's funny, the people that were the biggest critics of the movie were the ones that never saw the movie. They saw the title, and just by a title, uh, they, they took off in whatever direction they took off. But uh, what happened was once people saw the movie, the response to the movie was phenomenal, tremendous. Uh, in the theaters, this was really miraculous. There's nothing that we could have actually kind of pulled together and made happen. It spontaneously happened in that it's really a movie about prayer. It's about prayer for our nation. And all across the country, I started getting calls the night we first showed it from people that spontaneously at the end of the movie uh, would pray. And uh, I, I'll tell you one example in Nashville, Tennessee, packed theater, turned away people. And at the end of the movie, everybody stayed through the credits and a lady in the back of the room stands up and and in a loud voice just says, we need to pray now for our nation and begins to recite the Lord's Prayer. And uh, as she does, one by one, strangers in that entire theater were in unison praying to God. Uh, I heard reports of people that were holding hands and, you know, in between rows with strangers and praying Uh, little small groups in in lobbies as they were on the way out. Uh, Just a phenomenal response. So uh, it's just been exciting to see. And that's nothing that we could have manufactured. I mean, there's no big sign at the end of the movie that says pray now. (laughs) Well, that's really the the spirit behind your filmmaking. I know you don't do this to make money. Uh, It's helpful when you do, because then you can continue your craft. But what is your real motivation? You You wanna revive America for Jesus. That's exactly right. Uh, I think that uh, there, the answer to to everything, I think, points to me as a believer to Jesus. And uh, you know, I think we we look at uh, biblically the the responses and this, which was a politically charged uh, in some people's eyes movie because of the title, 
uh, when you get into it, and that's really a metaphor of healing for one man's life, which led to a prayer movement. And it's really a movement about prayer. But, uh, you know, scripturally, it talks about praying for our leadership. Uh, it talks about God really caring about our nation and healing our nation as we go to God with our own personal petitions, uh, pray for the leadership and authority over us. And uh, I think it's a mandate for us as Christians to do. So uh, that, that was the message of the movie. I would love to see somebody who watches this movie, and again, you can see it, I think at christiancinema.com right now, but let's say you buy a copy of the DVD in Walmart, you take it home and you love it, send a telegram to the White House and ask President Trump himself if he would watch the movie or host a screening in the theater in the basement of the White House. Uh, Rick, I hope you get an invitation like that. We need to take a short break. When we come back, I'm gonna ask Rick about his next Christian project, which is now going to print. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign an important online petition. Today, I wanna invite you to sign a critical petition to defend innocent babies and to end abortion in America. On this show, we like to pray and petition God, but we also need you to take action today by petitioning Congress to stop the taxpayer-funded child killing, especially by defunding Planned Parenthood, America's number one abortion provider. Why are your taxes paying to murder innocent children in the womb? Well, if Congress would simply define personhood as life beginning at conception, we can reverse Roe versus Wade. Please join me today by signing this important petition to Congress. Visit PrayInJesusName.org Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign your petition today. Sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. This is PIJN News. Hello, I'm Ted Baer, publisher of MovieGuide.org. And I'm Evie Bear Carroll, his daughter. So this is your family guide to movies and entertainment. And there's a new faith-based movie coming out, the least of these. Tell us about this movie. It's about a medical missionary named Graham Staines, who's been there for years, I think it's like 17 years, and he's doing missionary work. He's keeping quiet, he's not uh, overtly pushing people to evangelize. He also has some missions out in the countryside, medical missions where he helps people, treats lepers. And then a reporter wants to make his name, a Hindu reporter, and uh, he gets involved in trying to expose Graham Staines as paying people to evangelize. There's a law against that in India, and eventually what happens uh, is evil takes over. But the movie is about forgiveness, about kindness, about the gospel winning over the forces of evil. It's a very uh, wonderfully well-made, true story that has a powerful plot. So probably better though for middle school and up, right? Middle school and up, but they should see it because we need to know what's going on in the world. You know, Ephesians says, expose the fruitless works of darkness and commend the good. Well, the good is Graham Staines, and by going to the movie, you can commend the good. We'll take a look at the full review at movieguide.org. What did he give you to convert? You want the truth? (laughs) Truth always seems to cost something. You know, people ask me, chaps, we're watching on this network. We've already set our DVR to record your shows, but our friends, don't have this network, or maybe they can't watch at this time. Did you know we are on demand on 10 different platforms? You can tell your friends to find this show, PIJN News, on their Roku box or their Amazon Fire box. Just look under the religion or news categories. Or maybe you have a smartphone or your friends or grandchildren can find us on Android TV, Google TV, Smart TV, or iTunes. Of course, we're always on the internet, Look for us on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter, or better yet, subscribe to our daily email alerts at PrayInJesusName.org. It's important that you share all of these available platforms with your friends so we can mobilize all of the body of Christ to pray the news and change the world. Would you join us? Visit PrayInJesusName.org to learn more. Defending your religious freedom, here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined again by Rick Eldridge, who is a 
Hollywood quality movie producer, but actually he makes most of his movies right there in North Carolina. Uh, Rick, talk about the, I suppose the environment, is North Carolina more or less friendly to the movies you're trying to make than Hollywood? Well, I think it's uh, in, in today's world, uh, people go where uh, the best opportunities and incentives are. Most films are made on location and we shoot literally all over the world. When we uh, pick our film, we, we look at what are the environments, what are the, uh, the different things that are going to help us be successful. Some of that's incentive. Uh, and there are states that have very competitive incentives, which is dollars back for dollars spent uh, in the state. So, uh, you know, we, we go many different places to shoot and acquire the footage and then uh, typically come back to Charlotte and to the Carolinas to do the editing and the finishing because that's where I live and I want to be close to home. So uh, and it's very easier to do a, to a movie today that uh, doesn't have to be in L.A. Uh, in fact, a lot of people in L.A. go other places now on location to make their movies. So this is not your first rodeo. Mention other movies that people might be familiar with and then uh, your newest project, When We Last Spoke. Well, we did a movie a couple years ago, which is along the same line of this called Four Blood Moons. And uh, that uh, is one that you can still get out there on Amazon and such. Uh, some of my earlier movies were a movie called Bobby Jones, Stroke of Genius, a golf movie featuring Jim Caviezel and a great cast. Uh, I did a trilogy of films called The Ultimate Gift, uh, with James Garner, Brian Dennehy, Abigail Breslin. And uh, then we did an ultimate life and an ultimate legacy for a trilogy. And those are out there available too. Uh, we've also had a lot of fun with some kids product, uh, a series called Hermie and Friends with Tim Conway and Don Knotts. So it's been a pretty diverse uh, uh, amount of product and over a hundred titles that are in the marketplace. So it's just been a blessing to to do what I do and tell stories at a high level of, of excellence, but yet that have a message that can challenge and inspire. I love the prophetic movie and the edge to four blood moons. That was a couple of years ago, but this January, we just had another blood moon over Washington DC on the same date, the two year anniversary of when President Trump was inaugurated. I don't know if there's a prophetic significance to that blood moon. It was a full eclipse that my wife and I watched. Um, but talk about your new project, when, I last, when we last spoke. When We Last Spoke is based on a book uh, from uh, an author in Texas that has been a bestseller, Amazon seller. And uh, it's a phenomenal story of redemption, a story of uh, healing and coming together of these two orphans, ages eight and 10, who uh, during the 60s, so it's a period 60s piece, uh, and it's setting in a small town around a radio community and a radio station that kind of is the voice of this town uh, called Fireside. And uh, these two kids basically are left with their grandparents as dad's off at war in Vietnam and mom decides she can't handle this country life anymore and takes off to New York. And we see these young kids grow up uh, in the 60s and, and then uh, grow apart. And then 30 years later, come back together. And that's the uh, when we last spoke. So uh, through that, they find redemption and healing in their own lives and, and forgiveness. A uh, great story with an incredible cast. Uh, we've got uh, Melissa Gilbert, who plays the grandmother, Corbin Burnson, who plays the grandfather, uh, Cloris Leachman, 94 years old, plays the great grandmother, and she's phenomenal. She even dances in the movie. It's fantastic. Uh, <laughs> and these two young girls that are, I think, the next Abigail Breslin. They're both fantastic, and we're ex very excited about that film. Well, a 94 year old dancer would be worth the price of admission. <laughs> Uh, but when That's you work right. with Melissa Gilbert, who I think was in Little House on the Prairie, of course, and, and Corbin Burnson has been making a lot of Christian movies lately. Do you think uh, these messages that you're trying to send, are they attractive to a certain kind of actor or actress? I think they are because, uh, you know, the, uh, actors I think, and quite a few of them that I've gotten to know, uh, many of them have uh, become stronger in their faith by telling stories like this and seeing the results of their work uh, and others. And, uh, and I think that uh, people like stories of substance. Uh, they like stories that can really make a difference, that can have some depth to them. And uh, so more and more, you're seeing some, some great actors, some A-list actors that are, are, uh, are jumping on board to tell stories that, uh, that do have a redemptive value to them. And it's a pretty exciting time. I'm enjoying that. 
We have just about two minutes left and I do wanna pray with you before we go, but I have one last question and that is, if somebody out there has a movie idea or a, a dusty screenplay that just hasn't gotten the traction or the, the audience, uh, how do people contact you and what do you ask them to do? I would ask to send a synopsis. Don't send me a 150 page script <laughs> to start with, but send a synopsis, kind of a one page overview of what your story is. And I'd be happy to take a look at that. You never know where the next great story is gonna come from. So I'm certainly open to look at that. And uh, they can simply send it to rick at realworks.net and realworks with two E's like a film reel. I'd uh, be happy to take a look. Rick at realworks.net. And even if you don't make the movie, you might know somebody else across the country who might be interested and you guys uh, sort of pass these things around like uh, trading yeah. cards, I know. Uh, so That's we have right. just one minute left. Rick, would you join me in a word of prayer for your continued success? Father in heaven, we ask your blessing on Real Works and everything that Rick is up to there uh, and his staff and his cast and his crew uh, and, and the financers and, and people who just want to help win America for Jesus. Father, give them a voice and, and help them preach the gospel and lead and spark the next revival prayer movement like they talk about in this movie, Trump Prophecy the movie, the Trump Prophecy movie. Father, I pray for great sales at Walmart. I pray for great success on Rick and his, uh, his vision. Just give him all the connections and all the great success and favor that he needs. In Jesus' name, amen. Rick, you have the last word, please. Uh, where do people find your movie and, and mention your website and everything you want us to know? They could go right now to the trumpprophecymovie.com and see a, a download link right there. So it's really simple. Just click on it. It'll take you right through it. And you can either rent the movie or, or purchase the movie there to watch it multiple times. So I encourage you to do that. That's fantastic. And it hits Walmart shelves first week of March. Uh, yeah. Our guest has been Rick Eldrich. Rick, thanks for coming on the program. Uh, our website is PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Please donate, click on the recurring donation button. You can pledge just a dollar a month to help us bring this content into your living room or call us if you want prayer at 866-Obey-God. We'll see you next time. Today I wanna to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Would you sign that petition with me? Let's take action today. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.